what happened when COVID hit your business and your location set oh, to close? Can I tell the story? Yeah. I love the story. It. So <laughs> September of 2019, Megan and I, so this is about two and a half years after we started the company from just our apartment. We had eight stores open, three franchisees were, so three of the eight stores were franchised. We were doing well from the outside, like looking in. Our average unit volume at each store that we opened was lower and lower and lower each time we opened a store. The stores in Nashville were doing really well. And Megan and I really didn't like what we did for a living. So I didn't like running the scoop shops and, and neither did Megan. And we'd gotten in so deep that it's all we did. And you know, you, uh, you add a new door, like you add a new shop, like it's twice as much work. So we basically signed up for five times as much work, plus the franchisees mentoring them and, and helping them succeed. And not only did we just not have it in us at the time, which I think we've grown over time and, you know, continually done better, but like at the time it was like, dude, we just, we just don't like doing this. So we decided like, hey, we need to go back to trying to sell online, try to get back to the product because that's why we started the business. Like Megan loved her cookie dough. I loved it. That's what we liked doing, like sharing it with people. I love to do in pop-up events. I just wanted to get the cookie dough in front of more customers. And that was kind of what we were desperate for. And we thought the way was scoop shops when really it was, you need to solve for the best distribution model, yeah. the best impact, like what you said. Yeah. So like really figure out like, how do I have the most impact with my product? Well, it was really CPG the whole time. The margins just aren't very good in CPG. So when you're younger and you're a little short-term minded, you're going to be like, well, let me open this scoop shop where I can make insane gross margin versus like if I go to a grocery store, I'm making nothing. So at the time we were more focused on money and not impacts. So in September, October of 2019, we changed that mindset. We put together this plan of we're going to sell online. We're going to try to prove it as a CPG product and then kind of go from there. We're going to pivot the company. So that was interesting because it happened right before COVID. That winter was really hard. We had really overextended ourselves the summer before building stores. So we're coming into February really low on cash, like super low. Like Megan and I haven't paid ourselves in like seven months. We're in like yeah. the red zone <laughs> as far as like a company. And then we had a tornado in Nashville and shut one of our stores down. And it was a store we were actually trying to shut down. So we were like, all right, well, we were going to pivot this store into a production facility. Mm -hmm. So let's just go in, you know, when they clean up the tornado damage and we're going to do production there and start shipping our online orders out of that store. This is March of March 3rd of 2020. And obviously at that point, we're like tracking COVID saying like, you know, I wonder what will happen if this actually gets here. Like what happens to our business? Because we're food and people have to come in. So it was kind of already in our head, like what might happen. And Megan was also nine months pregnant at the time. Wow. So it was a very rough month. That's a stressful to be a wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. You don't pay yourself for seven um, months. You're nine months pregnant. Yep. Yeah. It, it was, was a tornado. It, it, was, COVID. it was wild. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> okay. March 16th, we shut all our stores down. And I actually had been driving back and forth to Cincinnati at the time because we had lost our manager recently. And March 16th actually felt really good. Like, it's weird to talk about, but I had told you already, like, back in September, we were like, hey, we don't really like doing this business. Yeah, and it made I, it obvious for you. Yeah, and I grinded all winter yeah. trying to, like, make sure, like, we're cutting costs. Like, I'm in the stores, like, helping the managers do things. Like, really getting my hands dirty in the business. And I was working, like, 80 hours a week doing something I didn't like doing. So then March 16th rolls around, and I'm like, all right, this feels kind of freeing. This is weird. That feeling led into, I think, the success, that feeling and then the clarity that Megan had, because right after that, on that day, she said something to me that was so powerful. She was like, look, like, we're just going to have to, like, make it through and put together a plan to survive. But we didn't just put a plan together to survive. We took this plan that we had already had to grow the online store and we just put it into overdrive. Like, let's take all the employees that were at our scoop shops, bring them over to that Germantown store. Let's start producing cookie dough. Let's post and contact all the influencers we've ever worked with, have them post about it. Let's partner with our friend that runs a digital agency and like start spending money on Facebook ads. Like we had no cash in the bank and he was like, just commit $400 a day, $300, $400 a day to Instagram ads to see what happens. And all of the stars just aligned because anyone that was doing e-com at the time knows Facebook returns were better than they'd been since 2014. The influencer posting worked our online store sales went from like 20 grand a month to like 
80 grand a week. Wow. It, it was insane. Yeah. Like th- wild stuff. Like we we're getting like 200 orders a day. And so by the end of March, like w- our daughter was born on March 31st and I was able to like go to the hospital with Megan and, and not work and not check my email. It was like a complete shift. It happened over two weeks and it took no money. I mean, you could say the pandemic like spurred it on, but really the only thing that really needed to happen was we needed to be like, we're shifting. Like we had said we were going to pivot and we didn't for months. We just set up the online store again, started sort of marketing it, weren't putting a lot of effort into it. It was a shift in effort. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. so weird. <laughs> like I love that. And, and COVID forced it to happen. We kind of were just very honest with ourselves about what we needed to do. And then my marketing plan became like, let's just be very honest with our customers. Like I literally posted pictures of our staff members and I was like, look, we don't want to lose these people. These people pay their mortgages with the money we pay them. Please. Like if you've ever wanted to support us, if you've ever wanted to buy cookie dough, this is the time. And I think the fact that we were so transparent actually worked. That's crazy. That's a good story. That's a really, really good story. Congratulations on your daughter. (laughs) Thank you. And at least you. (laughs) She entered the world with some clarity from (laughs) your business.